στιγμή. Ε, οπότε θα ήθελα να σα δώσω αν είναι. Συγγνώμη, αλλά καταλαβαίνετε, δεν γίνεται. Είμαστε έχουμε και έχουμε δουλειά. Δυστυχώ, δυστυχώ, καθίστε να σα και ένα στυλάκι που να γράφει. Α, έχετε. Γιατί προ εδώ πέρα δεν γράφουν. Οπότε. Ε, χρειάζεται κάτι άλλο. Από εδώ και το μέσα το αφήνουμε. Ο δεν πρέπει να το αλλάξω, να το βάλω στο ζεστό. Οκ, μισό λεπτό. Άρα, αφήνω λίγο ακόμα του γραφείου. Αυτό το χαμηλώσει, δεν το έβαλα λίγο. Ms. Ansi, can you hear me? Dr. Hansi, Dr. Ansi? Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Is uh, Hanan Bentlilo? Yes, we can hear you very well. Thank you. Dr. Ansi, can you hear me? Dr. Ansi, could you hear us? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Yes. Okay, you, you shall start now. The session has started. Uh, we are starting at uh, a quarter two. This is also on the agenda. Okay. Thank you. So we're waiting for a few more participants to join, and we will. Could you tell us uh, whom we are waiting for? First, first one. Uh, I'm trying. To, well, I have asked the moderators of the sessions to keep an eye on the um, speakers uh, because we were missing uh, one or two. But in all cases, as you will see in the agenda, our session starts at quarter two. Okay, so we're gonna wait for um, a, a bit less than 10 minutes. Thank you. Okay, you want to, st to, st to start at 9.45? Yes, yes. Okay, Initially, great. our session was planned for an hour and a half, and then we were, we just saw it actually in the Cairo Water Week agenda that uh, it has been changed to two hours. And this is something we cannot you know, easily um, cover. So we found a middle way. <laughs> and we said, okay, not two hours, not an hour and a half, but an hour and 45, okay? So Auntie, none of my panelists are there. There are three, none of them are not there. Okay, well, uh, inshallah, they're gonna- I mean, I keep Okay, well, uh, let us uh, let us start. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much to, to the organizers and thank you to everybody for joining uh, and for, for waiting for the meeting to start. Um, well, uh, good morning. Sabah uh, here to everybody and a very warm welcome to our session on action for empowering women in water diplomacy in the Middle East and North Africa region. Uh, this, is, this session is aimed to be interactive, lively, and discuss tangible ways to prompt action and make a change for female empowerment and leadership in the water sector in the MENA region. My name is Anfe Bruma. I am the deputy director at the Global Water Partnership Mediterranean and the theme leader uh, on diversity. And I'm here uh, in this uh, session that we co-organize uh, together with uh, my colleague, engineer Natasha Carmi, uh, the lead water advisor at the Geneva Water Hub and the former policy advisor on water at the Palestinian Negotiation Support Project. Well, before we get into the exchanges and the discussion, uh, Natasha, shall we share with our participants how our joint work on empowering women in the water diplomacy in the MENA region uh, came about? Definitely. Uh, good morning, sabah al-khair to all of our participants uh, and our panelists. 
Uh, as Anthony said, uh, we would like to welcome you on behalf of our institutions. We are very happy that you are joining the session. And I think the best kickoff we could have is by giving you the background about how this initiative uh, came uh, into place. It was actually a personal encounter, a professional encounter between myself, May, and uh, May Soon. Uh, and over the years, we've developed the trust. We were sharing our common experiences and common challenges as women in motor diplomacy. And we had this drive really uh, to have action, you know, for women as agents of change. So in 2017, we've conducted uh, a first mapping exercise in Lebanon, Jordan, and Palestine uh, that looks into the challenges that women face in water diplomacy key decision-making positions. This was published uh, in an article in the special issue of the Journal of Hydrology and Water Diplomacy supported by CWI. In 2020, uh, we joined forces with ANTHI, the Geneva Water Hub and the GWP Med, and we uh, launched on another mapping exercise where on one hand we reviewed and updated the work that we had done in 2017. And on another hand, we expanded the mapping to include the Maghreb subregion by including uh, Egypt and uh, Morocco. Through the mapping exercise, uh, the results of which uh, these were uh, launched and compiled in a comparative study of the, uh, uh, for the empowerment of the women in the MANA region in water diplomacy, which was launched in March uh, uh, 2021. Since the beginning of our collaboration with GWP Med since 2020, uh, we have had these uh, targeted outreach and dissemination activities. And so the analytical work that was done within the mapping exercise has actually evolved into the initiative uh, that we are going to share with you today. Uh, so, uh, Anthe, how about uh, what the study is really about? Okay, gladly. Um, well, this comparative study has effectively compared the challenges to the attainment of more women decision makers in water diplomacy and transboundary water cooperation settings in five Arab countries, as um, Natasha mentioned, namely Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, Morocco, and Palestine. The focus has been to identify the similarities and differences in the challenges female water experts face across the five countries and identify the capacity building needs in terms of the various skills of a 21st century water diplomat. And what makes this study so special? It is a dynamic document aiming to prompt action. It reflects uh, on the co-authors on, on, on our actually collective approach that recognizes the social, political, and institutional challenges to women's advancement in water diplomacy related fields globally and within the MENA region. And importantly, it emphasizes on the need for collective action where all members of society support female empowerment and leadership. We also believe that acquiring the skills needed for a good water diplomat would provide the opportunities for the attainment of decision-making positions in water diplomacy and water cooperation settings. Let, let me clarify that uh, our intention has not been to provide a statistical analysis, but rather mm -hmm. to provide an indicative understanding of challenges faced and opportunities available. So, um, Natasha, if this was not a statistical study, which it was not, uh, what was the type of methodology that we used? Well, uh, we actually used a basic a short questionnaire in which we involved almost 100 women that were coming from across the whole water sector spectrum in the five countries. And we tried through the questionnaire to map the main challenges they face. and those factors which really hold them back from having more leading positions in water diplomacy. In all of the countries, 
we gave special attention to ensure that the selection of the female were representatives of all the actors that were involved in the water sector, including government authorities, the different levels, utilities, a private sector, uh, academia, NGOs, elected women. And in the particular case of Morocco, we've also included um, female farmers. And replies to these questionnaires were actually uh, analyzed. And this was the basis for the uh, comparative study, which uh, we will be uh, sharing with you today. Now, in addition to the comparative study, and just you know, to give you an overview of uh, what we have uh, done, uh, we have also developed the uh, comparative study and we've published uh, the report in a way that we have first a basic introduction, a first chapter in which we have reviewed all of the existing legal and policy frameworks within each of the five countries that could actually assist in the empowerment of, wo of women. The chapter, the second chapter deals with the comparative study and we have a final chapter in which we have tried to look into what makes a good water diplomat. So today we will share the results of the comparative uh, study. However, before we do that, um, back to you, Anthony, so that we could share who the other co-authors of the study are. Uh, gladly, with pleasure. Uh, we are, have been very honored uh, with Natasha to work with uh, four more ladies, namely, and allow me to, to mention them by name, Engineer Sharafata Failal, former minister in charge of water in Morocco and expert on water and climate, Ms. May al Sayeh, communication manager in Lebanon, Dr. Tahani Mustafa Silit, the head of Central Department for External Cooperation and the director of the Nile Basin Initiative National Office at the Egyptian Ministry of Water Resources and Education, and Ms. Meysun Zubi, the former Secretary General of the Jordanian Ministry of Water and Education, and currently an expert on water and water diplomacy. So six ladies co-authoring the comparative study. Furthermore, uh, the initiative has been and uh, will continue being institutionally supported by the Global Water Partnership Mediterranean and the Geneva Water Hub. And the work that we do also contributes to the Union for the Mediterranean Water Policy Framework for Actions 2030. And how was this all possible? The financial support for making this happen was provided by the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency, SIDA, the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, STC, and the University of Geneva. And now it's actually time to get into more details and information about what we have done, in particular with the comparative, in the comparative section across the five countries. And I would, uh, I'm very honored and happy to ask uh, Sharafat to take the floor and briefly present to us both the key findings and also the next steps of our initiative. Sharafat, over to you. Thank you so much, Ansi. I'm trying to share my... Is it okay? Is it okay? Yes. Are you seeing me? Yes. Thank you so much, Ansi. I was very honored and glad to be part of this wonderful team who believe that change is always possible through the power sharing between men and women, since we, women and girls are representing half of the societies and therefore half of, of its potential. Gender equality is essential for peace building, for sustainable development at, as we are using the full human potential. This is the principle that motivates all the six of us to launch this initiative and to launch this adventure. Many thanks to GWP Med and uh, Geneva Water Hub for their, uh, the support provided. And uh, Sharafat, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but would, would you mind starting uh, on, from the first slide and maybe having it on full screen? Yes, yes. Thank you so much, thank you. Is it okay? Yes, yes, perfect. Yes. perfect. During my presentation, I will focus on the key findings of these comparative studies, as mentioned by Anthony. We will look first 
uh, we will have a look first in some initial cross-country comparison related to the level of education, the experience and position of all the, uh, the female respondents to our survey. Before uh, presenting the key finding of the comparative section, which is focused on the following area. First, we have the main factors contributing to the workplace male-female ratios. The second area concerns factors that influence the acceptance of decision-making position. The third one, skills needed to better lead in water diplomacy. Last but not least, definition of water diplomacy, we, which we were not going to tackle in the, uh, during this session. Concerning the level of education and experience of women responding to the questionnaire, we notice that almost 50% of female respondents hold a master's degree or PhD with an experience between 11 and 20 years. We could conclude that the common argument often used that there is a lack of competent women in the water sector or we do not have qualified women to heal making, uh, making decision position is totally wrong. Here is just a small sample of women working in the water sector. Uh, the the cross-country comparison section uh, revealed in the following key finding for the first area of analysis related to the factor that affects the male-female ratios in the workplace. We note that male-dominant society is considered the main factor in three of the countries, Jordan, Morocco, and Palestine. Lack of policy and legal frameworks, it was considered as well as a barrier to enhance female-male ratio in the workplace for the uh, five countries. For the second area of analysis related to the factors that influence the acceptance of decision-making position, here there is almost unanimity within female response on the lack of opportunities and lack of support from peers remain the main factor preventing women's access to decision-making position. Paradoxally, motherhood was mentioned only by a low percentage of respondents. So women uh, could manage very well different responsibilities in the same times. Last but not least, area of analysis concern uh, the skills needed to better lead in water diplomacy. The figure highlights that all of respondents uh, to the questionnaire in the five countries recognize the need to develop their diplomatic and international skills, as well as to acquire better knowledge of related legal instruments. This is quite logical, given that the technical competence of the, for, of the women has already been acquired. Now, what is the last step or what is the next steps? As some of you know, we have been engaged since the launch of this initiative in July 2020 in various events and workshops uh, in order to stimulate the interest of women working in the water sectors uh, to, to be engaged with us in this initiative and this adventure, as well as exploring and strengthening partnership uh, and operational synergy with, uh, uh, with uh, international organization. At this moment, at this step, we have launched an experiential learning program involving a series of monthly 90-minute series until the end of 2021, maybe uh, could be ex extended to 2022 with prominent diplomats and transboundary water cooperation experts. We are in the process as well of implementing a targeted capacity program, exploring partnership opportunity with similar initiative from partners and international uh, organization and securing funding as well. We are also planning to set up a multi-annual program involving a practical mentorship program uh, in the analytical level we plan also to deepen the analysis in the five countries by getting some additional information and perception 
and uh, even extended this uh, expanded this initiative to other countries uh, in Algeria, Tunisia, and even Syria and Iraq if the political uh, security situation is uh, secured. This is my presentation. Thank you so much. And uh, I give the floor to the participants for any comments and uh, for any in insight, for any reflection to share. Thank you. And Thank you very much, uh, Sharafat, for a very crisp, very clear presentation for the comparative part. Uh, we really very much hope to have interaction. So on, you know, on purpose, the presentation was short in order to allow questions from you, from the participants, and uh, be able to have a bit of a discussion. So uh, let us uh, turn to you. If there are questions, please put them on the chat or please raise your hand. Uh, let us have a little bit of, um, of a discussion, a little bit of the, on the exchanges on what has been shared. Any volunteers? <laughs> Maybe while the people are um, thinking about the question or the items to, 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 to ask, uh, could I kindly um, ask uh, our co-authors to take just one minute, literally one minute each, to share with us one highlight or something that they found astonishing or particularly impressive from the analysis they've done at country level. Um, let us start with you, Sharafat. Please share with us what was what did you find most uh, astonishing? What was mostly surprising in the analysis you conducted for Morocco? Uh, what was surprising for the more uh, the women uh, in Morocco? They are uh, all of them ready to replace, I mean, to take uh, other position outside of the country, given the, 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 the responsibility and the, the, their uh, engagement with family. This is what uh, attracts me more and what makes me uh, pride to support this initiative and go ahead to uh, enhance the, the women in the water sector. Thank you, Sharafat. Thank you. That's indeed interesting. Uh, what is the situation in Lebanon? May? Over to you. Uh, <laughs> sadly, uh, Anthony, it's not like in Morocco, uh, women in the water sector in Lebanon, they are very competent, but due to the um, Lebanese context and the sectarian regime and all the political dynamics in the country, uh, they are competent, and but they don't have the opportunity to be promoted to senior level uh, positions in the water sector and in water diplomacy. And if you are not affiliated with a political party, so your chances are less than others. Right, thank well, you. Uh, thank you, thank you. We keep on the hope in any case, so. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, what about uh, Jordan, Maysoon? Yeah, hi everybody, and happy to see the Jordanian engineer very here with us. Uh, never um, surprised with the capability of uh, the woman engineer, or, or in particular in water sector in Jordan. But um, what makes me sad when we I remember when we repeat and uh, talk with them again, I, I, I found out that the number of women that used to be in the decision making level becoming less. This is something that makes me sad, but now I'm watching and inshallah we will have a new secretary general, inshallah they will appoint her, so we will have another um, inshallah woman uh, as secretary general in Jordan Valley Authority and uh, this one is uh, we, we will be very happy to have her because this authority is basically um, do all the water diplomacy things because you know water, shared water, it is under their her mandate. I hope I'm waiting 
for her to be appointed spa, then we can celebrate having uh, women back. But uh, they are they are very good, and uh, still they are working. Uh, although they don't have, they don't, they are not treated equally with women, men. But this does not stop them from uh, progressing themselves and continue. I wish them all uh, success and to have more women as ministers, secretary general, in different places as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mason. Inshallah, I think it's the the the, the hope for everybody. Um, let us uh, move over to to, to Palestine. Uh, Natasha, would you like to share some highlight also from from the analysis that you you conducted? I, I don't know if my mic has a problem and if you can hear me. Yes, um, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Natasha? Natasha, is Natasha, your mic now? No, it seems like there is a bit of a technical glitch. Um, now, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I was saying that it wasn't a surprise the level of competency that existed among the women in the relevant, you know, ministries. Um, however, one thing that I hadn't anticipated, and uh, you know, I was quite surprised by was uh, how much uh, this negative perception uh, of women in leadership positions can influence someone's decision towards accepting a position or not. Uh, it was, you know, prior to doing the mapping, uh, I was thinking more about, you know, male dominant societies, uh, you know, uh, social structures. And I guess I hadn't anticipated, you know, how much that would impact uh, the perceptions on women. So while women were competent, while uh, they could have the opportunities for advancement, there was always this upper ceiling of, but women who gain positions, you know, are perceived, uh, you know, differently in the society. And so is this worth it? Maybe not. This was quite, um, you know, um, an eye opener for me. Thank you, Natasha. Um, well, uh, our, 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 our last um, co-author is actually engaged in another meeting that is taking place in parallel and is going to join us in a bit. So Dr. Tahani can share her insights uh, a little bit later on. But uh, we would very much like to hear from you. You've heard about the core findings uh, from the comparative part. Um, the co-authors have shared some highlights from the work that they've done at country level. Uh, please, let's hear from you. Anything that you would like to comment or ask or contribute with or share for reflection, um, either ask for the floor, uh, raise your hand with uh, the, the button, or uh, please post it on the, on the chat box. Ah, okay. Uh, we have the first question actually coming from Anna. Um, asking to further clarify the focus of the planned capacity building activities. And this is something actually I can take up uh, directly um, and, and respond to that. Thank you, Anna, for, for, for posing this question. Uh, it's never easy to just include in one slide everything that you plan to do afterwards. <laughs> Uh, there are, uh, let's say it's a multi-level multi uh, capacity building process that we are aiming for. Uh, as, uh, as presented by Sharafat, uh, we have started with this experiential learning program, which is a little bit uh, softer, if you like, uh, as a process, where it is more about creating this neutral and safe space where the network um, ladies, the network members of our initiative can feel comfortable to interact and ask questions with prominent diplomats and transplantary water cooperation experts um, in a closed uh, format where uh, 
anything can be exchanged. This is only uh, among the group. So uh, it's in order to enhance you know, the personal capacity and um, to be able to provide on the job advice. So this has been the, the starting point. We, we see that this is actually working and um, we have received positive feedback. We're gonna be able to hear from that also from in the next panel from uh, some of the ladies of the network. Uh, so we would like to continue with that. So one part of the capacity building, the other one, of course, to make it more structured uh, in terms of uh, providing the, um, the background or the knowledge that is needed through dedicated, targeted um, to workshops or training programs. Uh, what we have uh, received as a request from the network ladies is to have more practical um, uh, courses. So uh, yes, theory is great, <laughs> it's, it's lovely, but we also need something that is more hands-on and can be directly implemented. So we are looking into options on that. Uh, utilizing also our respective networks, um, you know, that the Geneva Water Hub and GWP Med have. Uh, so this is also the more structured part. And we are also aiming for a mentorship program, which is quite a demanding. So it requires better planning, more careful design. So, um, so a multi-layered capacity building program. And uh, as part of the, of the overall work, because obviously we, we very strongly believe in partnerships and uh, believe that we cannot do it alone and uh, together we can make a greater impact, is to utilize the opportunities that exist uh, from partners and from within our own networks uh, to, to capacitate and offer these opportunities to the network uh, members. So for example, GWP runs this uh, very big MOOC uh, on transboundary um, a work uh, um, program. So we have identified like the selected items within the MOOC that can be of more relevance to our initiative and to the network. Um, and similarly, of course, uh, exploring uh, how we can synergize better with the different partners, including the UFM, of course. So we very much look forward, Anna, to contributions and to discussing this. Uh, Natasha, anything that I uh, have missed out? Nope. Uh, to the point, there's a question from Hanan Faraj. So, Hanan, the floor is yours. She's mute. Uh, could we ask the, the host maybe to unmute? <laughs> Okay, it's um, I have I have to uh, to start my my presentation or uh, because I didn't uh, ask for any question. No, Hanan, uh, other Hanan. Hanan ah, okay, okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, we have a hand a hand raised. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it possible to unmute? Miss uh, Hanan, is it Farag? Uh, she, yeah, I think she's the same, but she, maybe she forget to, to, to lower her hand. The same name, Hanan Faraj. Hanan Faraj, uh, could you please unmute her? Could we ask the host to please unmute? Uh, to unmute Miss Faraj so she can ask her question. Uh, Engineer Rania, is it possible to unmute? Or also now unmute uh, Ms. Tarok uh, Kudais Daesh. Apologies if I'm completely mispronouncing the names. Okay, the floor is yours. Hello? Yes, yes, Are we can hear you. Me? Yes. Thank yes, you. we do. Thank you for all the panelists. Um, I have read the comparative study that was issued by GWP regarding the study on empowering women in water diplomacy in the Middle East uh, and to identify the similarities and differences in and challenges for that facing the female uh, water experts across the region. 
But uh, my question is that uh, the study was focusing on five countries regarding the uh, water diplomacy. Just it's about diplomacy and peace building and security and so on. What about the challenges facing the woman at all the decision makers st uh, stages? Uh, from the beginning, from where they are studying and involvement and uh, cooperation with the others uh, in demonstrating their ideas till they reaching the uh, diplomacy centers or the diplomacy discussions. Is there any study or is there any attempt to do such studies? Hello. Yes, yes, thank you. Button? Thank you very yes. much for your, no, for, for your question. Uh, sorry, I think it was all <laughs> nicely muted. Um, be, before we actually reply, is there anything additional that we have? Uh, is there any other question from any other of the participants so we can take them all together? If not, Natasha, would you like to start and I can compliment or like me to yeah. start? Yes, thank you. Um, uh, Therwa, uh, uh, if I understood your question correctly, you were referring to the developments in the water sector up to the point where uh, they are at the decision-making level. Am I correct? Yes, that's right, Katasha. How are you? <laughs> well, uh, actually, our our analysis is mainly focused, you know, at the decision making level. Uh, we're not really working, you know, towards uh, the, uh, you know, the other positions at the entry level. The reason being that, uh, you know, from a technical point of view, there are a lot of women uh, competent women that are working, you know, in the uh, water sector, whether it's at the Ministry of Water and Irrigation or at the Ministry of Agriculture or at the Ministry of Environment. Now, the gap that we saw was really, you know, at the um, decision making level. Lots of times we have heads of departments uh, at the line ministries that are women, but that is the uh, highest ceiling, you know, that uh, she could uh, possibly attain. Uh, it, she might be an advisor, she might be a technical advisor, you know, on a negotiating team or, uh, you know, in a joint committee on transboundary waters, but you would never, you, you know, particularly in the five countries, we would not find a woman who is uh, in the leading position. That is why, you know, uh, we were um, curious and because both of our work, you know, as GWP Med and Geneva Water Hub is really focused on the transboundary water cooperation aspect, uh, we have focused particularly, you know, on that aspect. I don't know if Anthony, you have anything to add? Uh, no, 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 not really. But to say that in the different sectors, actually, the challenges seem to be similar. So when talking about female empowerment and leadership. So um, hopefully by tackling one sector, this can be, can you know, spill over to other sectors as well. I mean, so this line of work can be of relevance. Um, uh, let, me, let me share also another uh, one, maybe final question uh, that came, I don't know if it was, it was not shared uh, in the overall chat box from uh, Ms. Dika Elhindri. Um, about uh, women involvement, is it a legislative problem or a cultural problem to improve their participation? Uh, could I ask uh, Sharafat May May soon to very quickly reflect on that? It's both. It uh, you mean uh, technical pro? Uh, they say uh, legislative problem or cultural problem? Or cultural? Yeah. Cultural. Uh, I think it's both. Even uh, with the. Uh, um, a strong uh, legislative and regulatory framework if we don't introduce the change at the cultural level we cannot reach uh, our goals 
This is what's happened in Morocco. We have a very strong legislative and regulatory framework that, that uh, recognized the women's rights and recognized equality between men and women. But still, still we, uh, we still have resistance of the society and the policy maker. So we have to struggle all the time to push them to recognize our rights or uh, to, to open the opportunity it is for women to be uh, engaged in the decision making position uh, through media through civil society through uh, women uh, in the high position we have to to uh, to work on all factors that that push the women to to be a part of the decision uh, at the uh, decision making position yeah may i uh, may i answer yes, uh, yes for course. um yeah, in Jordan, it is it is cultural and men dominant. It is not with the legislation because our constitution and the, all legislation do not differentiate between men and women. But to any practice, it is the implementation of these laws. So this is how it goes. Even even unfortunately, some of the women they do not support other women. And we see the last election in the in the media and the reporters. Uh, we are almost could have now women there. None of them even with the board. Although there is a lot, a lot of women who are from the media. So yeah, it is culture. It is women. They do not. They would prefer to see men in a position rather than see women, some of them. And this is a fact, we have to work on it. Um, they would prefer to see, so this will give them excuse why they are not there because the women shouldn't be there. But this is the thing, but our legislation knows they do not, do not differentiate uh, in this. Thank you. In Lebanon, it's the same. It's a combination of both the cultural and the legislation. We have legislations. It's in the constitution, we are equal, but in implementation, it's not the case. I believe that um, on the cultural level, there are a lot to be done. And uh, civil society has uh, many successful uh, attempts and they, in collaboration with media, they managed to raise uh, some issues and they were, uh, and is successful in uh, pushing the parliament to implement uh, laws, but still uh, at the cultural level, a lot has to be done. And also we need the support of women. Otherwise it will be too hard to achieve any change in our societies. Thank you, Ante, over to you. Thank you very much, May. Um, I'm a little bit aware one, about the time. You have one more question, uh, um, Ante, by uh, Fatima. Sure. Uh, let us. Okay. Yes. Hello. Um... Good morning, Hello. everybody. Uh, I'm very happy to be with you. I'm from Algeria. So just I want to um, to give you my observation. I have not a scientific study, but it's in Algeria. Uh, we have a contrast between the number of uh, girls uh, at university in uh, in the water fields, uh, so in hydrology or uh, in other uh, specialties, uh, but uh, in the water sector also, uh, but in uh, 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 in the top uh, uh, in in the ministry, for example, uh, we have not a, a lot of women. Uh, I think that it's a cultural problem because the uh, uh, number of girls at university in all uh, fields uh, is, uh, is a very, very, very uh, uh, great. Sorry for my English. Huh? <laughs> uh, but uh, in decision making, we have uh, not, you have, I think there is no, uh, we have never. Uh, had a woman ministry of water, for example. Uh, that's that's all. Thank you very much, Miss Fatima. Thank you. Um, well, uh, there is another hand raised uh, from uh, Gada Anwar. And we very very quickly let's hear from you as well, and then let's move to our next session. Yes. Uh, I'm trying to unmute you. Um, I'm sorry, it seems like I cannot do this. Could I kindly ask uh, uh, 
engineer Rania to assist with unmuting uh, Gada. Uh, she can unmute herself. Okay. Uh, would you like to unmute yourself? Uh, Ms. Gada? You, you can unmute yourself directly. I don't know if you can hear us. Uh, you can unmute yourself and, and take the floor. Okay, well, maybe there are technical problems. So let us, uh, let us keep the, the question. Uh, we're gonna have discussion parts uh, in all the sessions actually. So uh, without any further ado, and let me pass on the floor to May, uh, who is moderating our next session. And uh, so we can hear from the network ladies themselves. May, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Good morning again, dear distinguished speakers and participants. I would like to welcome you to this panel. Now it's time to hear from representatives of the initiative network on empowering women from the five countries, Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, Morocco, and Palestine. With this, we aim to provide a glimpse of the on the ground relevance of the initiative in the five countries and hear from you job practitioners about taking action and promoting change for empowering women in water diplomacy. Therefore, we would like to hear from you why is such an initiative important? Why have you engaged? What opportunities do you see? We will start from Egypt. Engineer Heba Al Hariri, an international consultant in disaster risk reduction and water at the United Nations. She has more than 15 years of broad international experience working in international, regional, and national projects in Canada and across the MENA region. Her fields of expertise include hydrogeology, disaster risk reduction, integrated water resources management, remote sensing, climate change, business development, and project management. Currently, in her new role as an international coordinator and advisor at the UN, she's leading several regional activities across the region, including the regional initiative on building back better from COVID-19 in the Arab states with UNDRR, and the government of Japan. In 2011, Heba joined the Arab Water Council, AWC, where she served as a regional technical coordinator and capacity building expert, leading the implementation of several regional projects and initiatives on water and agriculture management with top leading academic institutions and development partners May, we've lost you. We've lost the sound. Can you unmute yourself? Excuse me. So from where you lost me? Oh. Uh, the, the last sentence, the last sentence. Okay. Uh, in 2011, uh, Heba joined the Arab Water Council, AWC, where she served as a regional technical coordinator and capacity building expert leading the implementation of several regional projects and initiatives on water and agriculture management with top leading academic institutions and development partners, such as the Chinese Academy of Science, World Bank, League of Arab States, USAID, NASA, and others. In her previous capacity as the deputy technical director at Arab Water Council, Heba was co-chairing UNDRR, Gender Equality and Women Empowerment Group on behalf of AWC, with UN Women and was the main coordinator of AWC Network of Arab Women in Water. Mrs. Hiba, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mai. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yes, we do. Yes, okay. Thank you very much for the introduction. I'm very pleased to be here with you today. Um, as May mentioned, um, I have more than 15 years of experience in the region. And during these years, I had the opportunity to be engaged in several water governance uh, related activities. Um, and uh, also in, across the region and also in collaboration with the League of Arab States. And uh, I had 
um, I was able actually to witness uh, several um, technical uh, political challenges that were really hindering uh, the proper representation of highly qualified uh, women in water diplomacy and in the water sector in general. Um, so um, in my previous capacity as the deputy technical director, I was very lucky to participate in the survey that was done by the initiative from the beginning, and I was really impressed with uh, the regional efforts. So in my humble opinion, uh, I believe this initiative uh, could play a really crucial role in advocating and changing the conventional way on how uh, water diplomacy is usually seen. Um, water diplomacy is now defined according to various tracks uh, in terms of uh, formalities and actors involved and also purpose. So, um, for example, to have a successful negotiation, um, uh, inclusive participation of different actors from formal governmental officials and also informal non-governmental actors like the private sector, as it was mentioned in the introduction, and also the civil society uh, representatives and the media representatives is also very important. Um, because what we are trying to do is basically to create solutions for and uh, to create solution spaces for complex and to create windows of, of opportunities. So this definitely requires the involvement of everybody uh, in the decision making. Um, therefore, uh, understanding uh, water diplomacy uh, as the interaction between different stakeholders and engaging representatives uh, coming from different backgrounds like myself from uh, the private sector and non-governmental organizations um, in the formal and informal processes and enhancing the participation of women in on all of these groups really creates an opportunity, um, a bigger opportunity and a bigger window uh, to engage more women uh, in water diplomacy, particularly in the informal water diplomacy processes. So uh, my personal engagement in this initiative was basically to advocate that uh, inclusive participation is a fundamental right and hopefully we can reach that. And I really hope through this initiative, we can give examples and show role models um, of female practitioners who were able to overcome their career challenges. Because, uh, you know, at the end, we were all there at the certain stages of our lives. So um, hopefully we can shed the light on these um, you know, uh, really models and um, who were able and managed to create a seat uh, on the table and for themselves, keeping in mind as well that it's not, things are not usually judged by uh, like numbers. I mean, numbers is definitely a very good start, but what we really want is a real engagement in the process and an active engagement, uh, because in uh, several cases, um, sometimes the participation of women really amounted to women simply being passive recipients of information and not really, you know, properly engaged and act, uh, in an active role in the decision making. And um, finally, um, from my side, what I would really love to see here is to build on other regional efforts that target women's leadership uh, in peace and also in decision making. And uh, I had the opportunity myself to be uh, involved in some of these initiatives and to mention a few, uh, as it was mentioned in the introduction, the uh, Arab Water Council um, uh, Women Network and also the UNDRR Gender um, equality and women empowerment group. So hopefully by joining these uh, community of practices, we increase the number of women engaged in the high level negotiation processes and we strengthen the political dialogues and willingness to cooperate among women water leaders in the main region. Um, I will stop here and I um, uh, thank you again for this opportunity and back to you, Mike. Thank you, dear Hiba. Uh, now we move uh, to Lebanon uh, with our, uh, sorry, Mrs. Uh, uh, Jihad, uh, it was supposed to be you, and we give the floor now to Mrs. Karma because, because she has a uh, commitment at the same time. Mrs. Karma Ekmigji is a mediation advisor with the UN Women. She's also a senior policy fellow at the Islam Ferris Institute for Public Policy and International Affairs at the American University of Beirut and the lead advisor on their Women, Peace and Security Initiative. Prior to this, she was the International Affairs and Relations Advisor to former Prime Minister of Lebanon, Saad Hadiri, where she served as the focal point for all international dis dossiers for 11 years. Um, stemming from a strong uh, interest in empowering women in the field of diplomacy, peacemaking, negotiation, and mediation, 
Karma founded the Diplo Women Initiative to share knowledge, develop mentorship opportunities, and strengthening uh, networking in this field. And um, since 2009, uh, member, uh, Karma was member of the Blue Peace Initiative uh, in the Middle East. And as Heba mentioned, uh, she has been uh, involved in many initiatives in the region. It's to build up on existing initiatives to um, uh, to uh, uh, make forward this initiative and uh, have more women in all fields uh, of diplomacy. Karma, the floor is yours, and thank you for being with us despite your hectic schedule. Thank you, May. Thank you for having me. Uh, is the sound clear? Perfect. Yes. Good morning, everyone, and what a great way to kick off the day. Uh, I want to start by thanking the organizers of Cairo Water Week, uh, the Geneva Water Hub, and the Global Water Partnership for ensuring that this very pertinent and important topic, that is of women in water diplomacy, or what I like to call diplo women in water and hydro diplomacy, uh, is it is actually not neglected, that it is not left out of this week's uh, discussion, and it's very much present uh, today. In fact, my wish, my ultimate wish, is that gender is mainstreamed in all future discussions, and that we start integrating uh, this in all the sessions, rather than you know just having its own little separate silo, and that we have a session on this issue, um, but, but I appreciate that this will take some time, uh, just flagging it, uh, but I appreciate that this will take some time in our region and that it requires a deeper cultural paradigm shift on how we view policy issues and how we tackle policy issues. Um, and obviously in a deeply entrenched, you know, patriarchal uh, society where patriarchal norms are dominant, this will require hard work. But I believe wholeheartedly that we can achieve this equality and inclusiveness in dealing with policy issues, particularly uh, water policy. Uh, this session is very timely, and I'm going to tell you why. It's very timely because it coincides with the 21st anniversary celebrations of the Women, Peace and Security Agenda. So this week, uh, this week in October, every year, we celebrate uh, the anniversary of the Women, Peace and Security Agenda. And for those of you who don't know, um, this, this commemoration is basically, it is the anniversary of the passing of Security Council Resolution 1325, which was a landmark resolution that passed unanimously in the Security Council back in the year 2000. And its aim was that for the first time it, it acknowledged the importance of the role of women, in the prevention uh, and the resolution of conflicts and peace negotiations and peace building and peacekeeping and the representation of women institutions uh, in institutions as a whole. And so this is important for me today because we are discussing the issue of representation of women at the highest level in water diplomacy or in water institutions or in water authorities. And it's important, in my view, that we tie this into somehow the Women, Peace and Security agenda. And I'll talk a little bit uh, down the line on when I, when I present my suggestions or offer the suggestions that could prompt further discussion on how we can tie this in. But since I'm representing uh, Lebanon in this session, I will have to give you some back, a, a backdrop, some background on the situation, the dismal state of women in my country, in fact. Uh, we are, you know, as, as UN Women in Lebanon often calls it, in a one step forward, two step back situation. So what's happening at the moment is every time we achieve something, uh, we are pulled back, right? We are pulled back. The multiple crises uh, that my country is facing is stalling the progress for women. And of course, you know, it's, it's making it more and more difficult for us women to uh, to move forward in our at least representation uh, um, situation. Uh, so just to give you a few examples, we only have uh, six out of 128 MPs in Parliament. We are, you know, amongst uh, uh, the the very end of the list uh, of of representation. Uh, currently, all our parliamentary blocks in in Parliament have refused 
to introduce a quota system for the next elections. So we still remain very far, although we have amazing feminist groups, great institutions, women who are tirelessly working uh, to make sure that a quota is adopted, but unfortunately, uh, they have been disregarded or we have been disregarded as this is not a priority right now. The country is facing a crisis. Although, you know, as the economist so well put it uh, last month for the first time as, as, a, as a headline, uh, why nations fail? Well, uh, women, uh, countries or nations that fail their women uh, are doomed, uh, are, are set up to fail. And this is what the discussion in The Economist was all about. Uh, I, I urge you all to read it. I think it was very important to draw the attention, a uh, global attention to this issue. Well, we in Lebanon are the masters of, you know, a failed state and masters of failing our women who are in turn, uh, you know, not being able to contribute to the success of the state. So we have a quota problem that is not being introduced. A temporary special measure is not being introduced. And with the increasing socioeconomic crisis, uh, with COVID, you know, I don't have to mention to you all the reasons why today women are not being able to take a front seat. But, but I paint this bleak picture to tell you where we are today, although I remain extremely hopeful because I see an opportunity in every crisis. And I think that today we can, in fact, use water as a, a catalyst or a trigger uh, or a pilot to show that, in fact, you know, women uh, can and are able to uh, uh, bring about change in, in, in certain um, in policy fields. And I think uh, the water, because Lebanon today is in every headline in every news uh, paper in the last month has said Lebanon is about to run out of water. Lebanon has a water crisis. We are in the face of a water crisis. I think this can present an opportunity for the women from my country who you know, as Natasha said, as Anthe said, as uh, 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 as Sharafat said when she was preparing the or giving the presentation, we don't have a lack of, of women who have technical uh, knowledge. We don't have, you know, a shortage of women in this field. They are there. The question is how we can use the opportunity to expose them, to, to highlight their work and to give them the, the confidence uh, of perceiving themselves as change makers and not just sitting in the back seat. As Natasha said, you know, it's, it's how we perceive ourselves. It is a challenge. And this is, it goes back to the entrenched patriarchal norms that have deeply been rooted in our culture that I, I, you, you don't, shouldn't talk about yourself. You shouldn't show that you are accomplished because then you will threaten the man or the man will feel insecure. I, you know, you shouldn't show that you are uh, uh, you know, knowledgeable enough because it can threaten the others in the room. We are done with this Aib period. Now we want to expose ourselves. We want to put ourselves on a platform. We want to say that we know we shouldn't be ashamed of putting ourselves forward because, you know, I've been sitting in a, men, in a room with men for a long time. In the beginning, I used to stay quiet because I used to feel like I may say something stupid or I will say something that they will perceive that I'm not knowledgeable enough. But a few years down the line, I realized I should have spoken much earlier because some of them have no idea what they're talking about. And so I want to stop wasting time and I want to put myself out there. Mind you, I'm not saying that, you know, uh, women are better than men. I'm saying that there's 50% of the society that's not included in the decision making process. And it's time for us to step up in partnership, forge alliances with the men in the room, in the sector, in the water sector build our alliances with them so that they can in turn help us in uh, promoting ourselves. So uh, a few suggestions inspired from the situation of my country, and I will leave it at that. Uh, the first is, and I've mentioned this in our private sessions before uh, in our workshops, like you said, when you presented the results, there are no shortage. So there's no supply shortage. The women are there. The question is, how do we uh, balance the demand side of the equation when it comes to having more women in the water sector? Well, demand means the mainstream population needs to understand that their water problems, whether they're transboundary water problems or their integrated water management issues that are failing them, 
require the knowledge of the women on the ground because the women have a better connection or are more sensitive to the situation on the ground because we are more, you know, in the day to day, we have more friction with the general society. So how do we create a demand? We need to raise awareness. We need to build alliances with media outlets so that this issue stops becoming an elitist issue that we discuss together in water specific fora. And it becomes a topic that is more and more introduced in day-to-day -day news cycles, in day-to-day -day issues. So we have that responsibility. We have that responsibility to come together and think how we are going to make water a more mainstream issue, just like climate change became a mainstream issue. If you look 20 years ago, climate change was extremely elitist. You had government policymakers who talked about it. You had a few scientists that talk about it, policy, some policy advisors, and that's where it stopped. Today, you fast forward 20 years, my seven-year-old son has a climate change project at school. So it has been democratized. The issue has been mainstreamed and more and more people know what it is about. They don't know the technicalities like all of you engineers know, and they don't need to know the technicalities, just like they don't know the chemical composition of the atmosphere with every particle, but they know something is happening in the world that's changing the climate temperature and it's going to be doomsday if we don't address it. So how can we simplify our water issues to present it to our new generation in that way. The second is to position- uh, Arma, uh, Sorry to interrupt, yes. but can, please, can you hurry up because- uh, Yes, you I'm done. Your time. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I know, I have to hurry up because I have to leave. So yes, I know. I have more reason <laughs> Thank to you. hurry up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, second is how do we uh, position water uh, in our uh, uh, national action plans, so women and water, uh, in our national action plans for a Security Council Resolution 1325, and we can talk about this uh, more as well, uh, how we can develop collaborations with training institutes, whether it's like something like UNITAR or UN Women, who can help us together with our network present here on building that collaboration. I'm a member of the Mediterranean Women's Mediators Network. I'm sure we can also forge some sort of partnership there uh, with regards uh, to water diplomacy. So these were just a few ideas uh, that I wanted to, to put forward, inspired from my work and the situation that I currently live in in Lebanon. Thank you so much for having me here today. And uh, I wish you all a great day and a great week in this Cairo Water Week. Thank you. Thank you, Karma, again for being with us. And it's true that we, should, we need to build more alliances with the media and simplify issues about water. We have been doing this, but unfortunately in Lebanon, if there is no crisis, media will not be pushed to cover these development issues. Thank you again. Now we give the floor uh, to uh, engineer uh, Jihad Abu Jamuz, uh, Regional Infrastructure Director of Arab Tech Jardinia International based in KSA. She is a well-known professional in the MENA region with more than 30 years of experience in infrastructure engineering and uh, environment projects. Uh, she's a certified consultant uh, water engineer with head specialities on both water and environment project management, professional PMP, and a certified trainer in water sector and national trainer in ISO water footprint. She is a board member of Arab uh, Countries Water Utilities Association, representing the private sector, and served as the chairperson for public awareness technical working group. Engineer Jihad, the floor is yours, and sorry for making you wait. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you all of the attendants and thank you actually for a great opportunity for all of us to meet here and to at least exchange some ideas and some uh, background of each other. Uh, it is really a great support team that we are having here. Actually, I will start different a little bit. Uh, I will tell you some a little bit about myself. I entered the water sector by accident. It was not planning for me. I, I just complete my bachelor degree in civil engineering. I want to have a master's degree in structural engineering. And then at, at that time, there was no vacancy on this uh, specialty. So I decided to go to the water master's degree and I can change later. Uh, when I started this, I was the only female in this master's degree in the University of Jordan then. Uh, this was a uh, very early 19th and uh, I, I have another seven to eight colleague, fem uh, men, females. 
uh, this actually after two semesters, uh, I like the branch and I stay there. And this is, uh, let's say, uh, yani streamline my uh, second career to be uh, in Waj, in Water Authority of Jordan as, as an engineer. I spent there about eight years. Uh, I ended uh, and then I decided to move uh, to private sector when I, yani when international company was approached me to join them. Uh, at that time, uh, there was a lot of struggling because uh, no one, of my family or friends or colleagues support this idea because I'm leaving my comfort zone to, to go to a private sector and uh, to have all of these things. Uh, actually, I decided and I go then uh, at, at my first career, uh, let's say period, they sent me to a training on a leadership in Brussels. At that time, I was confident uh, yani, on all my tests, uh, I actually, in the training, I mean, I got a high score and all of these things. After two days of the training, there was a closing session that every one of the trainees sent a message to, to his friend and his colleague. And I was shocked when I saw that most of the colleagues in the training, they were almost all European actually at that time. They said to me that you have to step up, you have to stand up, you have to and uh, I was not thinking that I am so weak at that time, but I feel that, okay, maybe because I am the only Mediterranean, I am the only woman. But really this was the, uh, maybe the step that I stand a, a lot at that time on it. And I think, thought about it uh, many. And I, when I came back to the office, I, I was, I came uh, yani, with a, a decision that, okay, I will full confidence, I will, a step up and I will not shy, I will not shy, I will not shy. Uh, something, there was something in our, let's say, cultural raise up that, uh, like even Karma mentioned to that, that we little bit, although we are very confident in our technical and our professionality, but we, we don't step up. And from them, then actually, I, I, I uh, there was a lot of opportunities that I took it. Uh, and of course, there were a lot of challenges with a lot of traveling, leaving my kids at that time and all of these things. But Alhamdulillah, yani I was succeed on all of these things. And I promoted from water engineer up to senior project manager, then operation manager, then managing director, and finally as a regional director for the infrastructure. Uh, I just want to mention this because uh, uh, really, uh, yani, although there is a lot of statistics about this, and uh, or, although there is a lot of initiatives about this, but uh, maybe uh, we have to focus on our uh, raising up of our kids. And I believe that uh, most of our issues is a cultural issues. Like my son was mentioned in Jordan, for example, we don't have an issue of regulation of laws or discriminances that this is very public, but uh, it is hidden in our DNA. It even if you know, we are all women, but we raise the, uh, our kids, you know, the son a little bit different than daughters. Uh, I am happy, for example, that I have uh, three daughters uh, and one son. Uh, my daughters is all engineers, uh, but not the son, for example, and they are very, very successful in their in their business and their trucks. So this is I just want to mention that sometimes we need uh, the right shock, or sometimes we need uh, uh, someone to, to to tell us that we have to step up because we really have all of the qualification that needed to be in the in the decision makings and that. Uh, the, the other issues that uh, water is going to be increased, mad water is going to be increased about 55 or more percent at the 2050. And this means that uh, uh, women as a man actually manager of this uh, precious uh, actually uh, component of the nature, uh, she's the manager of this and she has to understand her value of this and she has to take uh, no one will give you your, uh, yani, your, right, your rights or your positions unless you have to fight it. And this is what we all we have to do. Uh, uh, although yani, numbers, uh, uh, female engineers in Jordan, they are about 25% of the engineers in Jordan. And although engineers in Jordan is about, is, is one of the highest, let's say number in, in the world. However, uh, very few, they are in our sector and actually more fewer and fewer than they are in the positions of having, uh, let's say, to be uh, any uh, participation in the decision makers. Uh, 
because, okay, we need some uh, political or uh, let's say environmental enabling things. Uh, women need environmental enabling things, uh, environment enabling things in, and uh, regulations and laws in all of our countries. We need, uh, 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 let's say, a circle of support through the family, through the friends, and through, uh, through the society itself. Uh, what I'm looking in Jordan, actually, I am very optimistic that uh, things is, is it changing. Things is changing. However, it's need time. It's need time because uh, there is a lot of uh, public awareness uh, examples and exercises need to be practices uh, to change the society itself. It's not to change the uh, uh, to change the, the laws and to change the women itself. Actually, uh, our enemy is inside ours. Uh, our uh, yeah, our weak is inside ours. And uh, sometimes they said that uh, the worst actually manager is the female to other female and this is this is really our problems we have to take care of this we have to raise our kids in the right direction uh, and uh, to be a very full confidence persons that you are uh, not only half of the society like that like always what we say you are more than half of the society because you are raising the full society actually so our role should be more and more and more thank you Thank you, Engineer Jihad. Uh, now we give the floor to Dr. Uh, Hanan Ben Qdilo. She's the head of department at National Office of Electricity and Drinking Water in Morocco. For more than 20 years, she has been working on finding solutions to water and sanitation issues in Morocco, Africa, and MENA region. She believes that in order to achieve sustainability in the water field, besides managing water scarcity, gender equality and poverty eradication needed to be addressed equally. For that reason, she has been dedicating her efforts to applied research projects and capacity building programs that improve the livelihood of rural populations, particularly providing access to clean and safe water, as well as advancing and sharing the knowledge of integrated water resources management. Um, in parallel, she has launched several capacity building programs targeting women from Africa and MENA region, in addition to organizing learning trips and workshops to share experience and show by example how Moroccan women lead in the water sector. Doctor, the floor is yours. Thank you, May. Good morning to everyone. I want, first of all, I want to thank all the women uh, uh, who launched this uh, interesting initiative. Uh, so I am pleased to be uh, with you today to give uh, you my opinion opinion of uh, on uh, this uh, initiative. I think uh, action for women empowerment in water diplomacy in MENA region is very important because it will allow to set up a female network to inspire young women and empower them in the field of water diplomacy. This will be ena enabled by sharing knowledge and experience by women towards women and give, uh, giving them advices on how they can lead and contrib contribute to decision making in the water sector in the Middle East, East and uh, North Africa region. Uh, this female network will be like a space to mentor women by capitalizing the experience of the peers and sharing it with young women in the region. I am engaged with this initiative because I want to share my long experience in the water sector of about 20 years, mainly in uh, production and uh, distribution of water and governance and capacity building and research on uh, uh, what in, in the water field. I want to share this long experience with the new, the, the young generation, mainly with the women, because women play a central role in water management in both rural and urban areas and must be more involved as a decision maker. This will not be possible without capacity building and awareness program programs which allows development of women technical skills and also self-confidence as women which 
could be achieved by promoting uh, the adoption of a new attitude and a new mindset, which give continuous conviction to women that as long we have a strong conviction in the development of program and proje projects around water, our footprint will be certainly uh, will certainly be well mar marked whether we are men or women. This, uh, I think, this initiative will strengthen the impact of women's diplomacy in the water sector at the uh, operational level as well as the decision maker making level, uh, because these uh, initiatives allows women knowledge management and expert, expertise sharing of the women towards the woman promoting a water uh, woman motor, which is very important uh, to learn from women peers and capitalize their knowledge to improve women, women empowerment in water diplomacy by changing their attitude mindset to be more confident and contribute uh, with conviction in uh, the water sector uh, development in different fields. Thank you for, for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Hanan. Um, and uh, due to your passion uh, of water, you have been a strong advocate for uh, supporting youth and women in your country. Thank you for your intervention. And now we give the floor to uh, Mrs. Ibtissam Abul Hajja. Uh, Ibtissam Abul Hajja is a water and climate change expert in the field of agriculture sector for more than 20 years. She works with Ministry of uh, Agriculture as the Director of Drought and Climate Change Department. She started her, her career as an agricultural water and irrigation expert and then starts working in the field of climate change and she's the Ministry of Agriculture representative in the National Climate Change Committee, and she supports the development of climate change and training program for young agricultural graduates. And she leads the agricultural and FAO team who prepared the first mitigation project that was successfully applied to the NAMA farcicality entitled Low Carbon Olive Value Chain Development in Palestine. Mrs. Ibtissam, the floor is yours. Uh, good morning, uh, all. Uh, first, my name is Abul Haija. Abul Haija. Abul Haija. Okay. You know, it's Sorry. a common, a common, a common mistake <laughs> that they call it Abul Al Haija. Yeah, my name is Abul Haija, and as you said, I work in the Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, you know, this initiative uh, was uh, very important for me, in, in personally, first because you know, uh, the number of women working in the agricultural field are um, are minimum, uh, and. Uh, uh, I, I have to work always with the different uh, men and uh, I don't have that support uh, from women in, in, in my work. And this initiative comes as uh, a support for me that there are a lot of women there. They are working in the water field and they are uh, having this lo lovely experience and they are also can uh, be in a high uh, level of, of water uh, management. Uh, as you know, uh, here in the ministry, uh, you will find that the number of women in the, uh, as general, there are 40% uh, of the women working in the ministry are, uh, from the employees are women. But when you go to the higher levels, what you are talking about the mid-management, you will find there are only 15. But when you are going up to the, to the high level of management, you will find only less than uh, one to two percent. And unfortunately, uh, that these women, even though I know they are incredible women and they have good experience, they only were uh, hired because of uh, parties or some uh, political conditions, not because of how how lovely women they are and how good they are in the field of the the, the field that I working uh, with. with. Uh, so this this is this initiative uh, was very important for me to, to to be part of it, and I want to thank Natasha for 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 inviting me uh, for, for to be part of it because you know at the technical level uh, I have developed uh, a great deal of experience uh, either through the ministry or through my personal uh, efforts uh, because uh, I know multiple uh, donors. I work uh, closely with FAO, with the GIZ, with UNDP. And many times they they, they offered uh, some uh, some trainings related 
to, to your technical capacities uh, as a personally or uh, out, uh, within the the, the, client, uh, the the ministry. But the the idea of developing our soft skills uh, in, uh, for example, in negotiation and uh, conf conflict resolution, this is was also some so there is. A, uh, there is a missing here in, in, in the ministry and also many of the donors that are supporting us because they believe that our 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 skills should be only only in, in, in the in the field of technical and they don't take consideration of such soft skills that also help us to, to deliver our services better to the people that we are working with uh, either at the uh, farmer levels or at the decision maker uh, uh, levels so i think this initiative first it help us that to tell us that there are other women working closely in the water and we can get benefit from their experience. For example, uh, the, the experience that has been shared by uh, Mrs. Maisoon uh, or uh, Natasha and uh, uh, Ms. Sharafat and all of these, they help us that we can many, we can do it, but we should be a little, a little, a little patient and we have to work on our experience. Uh, and we can, and one of the things that I hope that we can do in this in this initiative that we could build our experience i hope that we can also be capable to to transfer this knowledge to the newly graduate uh, ladies that they are from different uh, sectors because these soft skills can 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 be uh, applied at different sectors i hope that we can all be capable to transfer this knowledge uh, uh, for me to be because you know i we have been working um, with the university with al quds university they have this wonderful program that they join uh, they join technical with experience with uh, with a lot of things and i have been joining with them and as a role model and i'm happy that they choose me to be a role model for women working in agricultural water and transfer some of my experience uh, to to this woman the enjoyable thing working with these ladies and uh, and how you can make a difference with their life at this early stage of their working uh, working st stage that I think that helped them to be, I think, better fighters than, than we had been. Because as we said, we were very, we have been, we have many ties with the society, with the al -Aib, as the karma said, with some time that we were in, in you in, in, in a field full of women when we start our work uh, 20 or 30 years ago. We were newly introduced to this job. So we, we have a lot of fight. We have to fight for our lives as, uh, to, to get uh, sometimes to get a train training. Uh, you fight for that because they believe you are a woman, you should stay at home. Uh, thank God we give you a, a work opportunity. So I hope that if we could also develop this woman and help them to work better, I hope that in the coming years we could uh, raise uh, a woman generation that they are more capable in fighting for, for their rights and increase the number of women that they believe in women. Because as we said, sometimes one of the major obstacles that women are against women. So I hope that we can, we can develop this experience that we have to be together if we want to, to do better and if we want to make women more uh, empowered. And thank you. Thank you, and Engineer Abu al <laughs> Thank <laughs> and you. <laughs> for sharing your experience and being a role model. Uh, with Due to la time limitations, we will move the questions for the second panel. Uh, join me to thank all our distinguished panelists and participants from the five respective countries in the MENA region for sharing their reflections and supporting our initiative from the very beginning. Without your contribution, the comparative study on empowering women in water diplomacy wouldn't have been developed. And uh, adding to what Karima said, this initiative is already tied to uh, security resolution uh, 1325. It, it, it's built on its uh, uh, aim to empower women, especially in water diplomacy and negotiations. Now I hand over to one of the co-authors of this initiative, Engineer Maisoun al Zabi, former Secretary General of the Ministry of Water and Irrigation in Jordan. And currently Maisoun, she's an expert on water and water diplomacy, who will moderate the next panel on strengthening action through collaboration with development partners. Maisoun, the floor is yours. And dear participants, your uh, questions will be answered in the last panel. Thank you for being with us. Over. Yeah. Thank you, Mai. 
Um, uh, good, good afternoon. Uh, first, I would like to thank my distinguished panelists for uh, accepting uh, this invitation and uh, readiness to share their experience with our very wonderful uh, pioneers network that we have. Uh, and uh, also, I would like to convey Dr. Jasmine Musa. Apologies for not being able uh, to participate because she she is ill and not too serious. But you cannot hear, hear her. You know, it's cold and she cannot talk. But uh, she 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 apologizes for not being able to to participate. Uh, the plan was to start a question by question, but now because of the limited time available, I will start by asking three questions to our uh, panelists, uh, and then um, uh, they will answer by um, one by one. So the first question is, how does your organization institution support female leaderships in leadership in water sector and or in MENA region? The second question is about opportunities. Would you recommend for materializing the work of this initiative? And finally, are there any activities in your current work plan in which we could join uh, forces? I will start. I will start with Ms. Uh, Russia Osman. She is Minister, Deputy um, Head of Provision Regional Coordinating, Coordinator North Africa, uh, State Secretariat, the Division Middle East and North Africa, Swiss Federal Department of Foreign Affairs. Rasha Osman has been um, Deputy Head of MENA Division at the Swiss Federal Department of Foreign Affairs since August 2020. Prior to this position, she, was, she has been uh, post, uh, posted as diplomat at Swiss Embassy in Berlin, the Swiss Mission uh, to European Union in Brussels, um, and in uh, Lubyanka, I don't know the, if I pronounce it well, and New York, I think, as well as MENA Division from two, 2008 and 2012. Before joining the Swiss Diplomat Service in 2007, she worked at the Swiss Federal Office of Refugees, where she was, among other, responsible for international migration dialogues. Rasha Osman has received her uh, MA uh, from University of uh, Bern and has studied English and American literature, political science, and Islamic. Ms. Rasha, the, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for having me um, again. And um, thank you also again for the initiative and for the presentation today. Um, I found especially the last panel very, um, very insightful and very helpful. Um, there were a number of remarks that I've taken out of this um, that I would, you know, just briefly maybe reflect upon. I know that you asked a number of questions, but um, if you allow me to, to reflect on that. Um, uh, I've, we've seen that there um, is a, a number of very well educated women, that there are um, institutional opportunities, but at the same time there was mentioning of having to change culture. And I think that this is a very important remark because um, in, in, in general, we have a number of countries where maybe in legislation, maybe in the constitution, um, gender equality, um, equal opportunities are, uh, are inscripted. Um, they are the law in general, but that doesn't mean that access is already, uh, is always granted as there is a cultural paradigm that maybe um, a certain professions are not to be taken up by women or um, the ch chances are very limited. And um, allow me to, to also look at Switzerland. Um, Switzerland, as um, some of you might be aware, um, we have nowadays, we have, um, in, in our government, our cabinet is 42% uh, is, is women. In our parliament, it's also 42% um, of women that are uh, in the parliament. So that is a very big achievement, but it's an achievement that we've only reached in the last 50 years because Switzerland only allowed women to vote on the national level in 1971. Um, as you know, it's a direct democracy. And, uh, and prior to that, the men, would um, would always refuse um, that uh, right to vote. So um, so it also shows that even in Switzerland we had to push for cultural change to to push for changing the perceptive, and uh, and once we have done that, you know, progress can can start. So this may be um, our uh, a little bit an, um, 
um, a reflection upon uh, what has been said in the panel before and maybe also our experience. Um, now the question, how does our organization support um, female leadership in water sector, but also um, in, in the MENA region um, in, in general? Um, I, uh, excuse me? Kindly, can you unmute yourself because Mrs. Osman is speaking? Okay, um, yeah, I'll take it up again. So, okay. Um, well, um, in, in Switzerland, maybe allow me to talk a little uh, generally. Um, we have um, this year um, launched um, a network that's called the Swiss Women in Peace Process Network. Um, where we think um, this network um, would allow women um, a space where they can engage and connect with like-minded peers. It's, it's targeted at women in, in our department, but it's um, part of a wider community of regional women um, mediator networks. Um, um, a study has shown in 2019 that women only con um, constituted 6% of mediators and 13% of uh, negotiator in major peace processes. And I think it's very important to include women in such processes. And it's also with that in mind um, that Switzerland um, has um, a national action plan to implement the UN Security Council Resolution 1325, which was already mentioned um, on women, peace and security. And uh, so our current national action plan uh, continues until next year and will of course be uh, renewed then again. So um, there is a strong engagement in trying to uh, introduce uh, gender issues, um, uh, female leadership, um, we, we promote the participation of women from civil society, for example, in inclusive peace processes, um, also in our cooperation programs uh, with the um, development agency um, SDC. Um, we aim at uh, including women in, in programs, um, be it uh, that they are the target of specific programs. Um, for example, if I look at the MENA region um, in the um, cooperation program uh, for Egypt, which has been uh, renewed this year, which runs until 2024, um, there is a specific target of um, including women and youth in the labor market. Um, including migrants, for example. So, um, so this is uh, one part where whatever we do as, as projects and at programs, we try to look at um, the gender aspect of that, meaning that um, the partner organizations that we work with, that there is a certain balance that we have partner organization that includes women or are women led, but also that um, some of the projects that we had are specifically um, targeted at women. Um, maybe also if we look um, at a global level, um, the UN Security Council resolution was mentioned. Um, there is the UN entity on women, um, UN Women, where Switzerland is in fact uh, the number one donor. Um, for the period uh, 2018 to 2020, uh, we have um, contributed or a basic contribution of 48 million Swiss francs. Um, that's approximately 60 million Swiss francs per year. Um, we second um, collaborators to UN women. And um, by doing so, we focus on, on the objectives of improving access for women to the job market, um, amending the necessary legal basis to enable women to participate in the economy on an equal basis and to strengthen government and public services to facilitate implementation of their own um, programs in the area of gender equality. So, um, so this means that there we play a very active role in monitoring and evaluating um, the accountability when it comes to, to UN women and, and their programs. And um, maybe uh, one little point that I would like to mention with regard to women, peace and security, um, we have um, created um, an app, which you can also download on, on your phone, um, called Women, Peace and Security, um, which gives information on our uh, um, on projects with regard to women, peace and security, and um, which we have launched uh, with a number of other countries. So this may be um, a little the, the, the global range. Um, 
When it comes to, to water, um, Switzerland is a key partner of the Geneva Water Hub. And we also um, cooperate with the Global uh, Water Partnership. Um, this study that you has, have mentioned is also part of our engagement that there is a certain contribution um, to enabling um, such um, studies. Um, we also um, are, uh, of course, part of uh, or have a Blue Peace Middle East uh, um, projects and activities. Um, so uh, we have initiatives on water and peace in the Middle East. And we have, uh, for example, um, supported the, the creation of the Water Diplomacy Center at the Jordan University for Science and Technology. And I think that in the future, we will have to look um, even closer at linking um, women engagement and, uh, and water programs and water projects to empower women to become activate um, or active um, negotiators um, with regard to water diplomacy. So um, I hope this answered some of your question uh, when it comes to um, opportunities um, for, uh, uh, for example, for, for the um, initiators of the study or for organizations, I think it would be important to cooperate with like-minded partners to look at where are ex existing structures. Um, for example, um, the Water Diplomacy Center in Jordan and, and to see where you can connect in such, um, such networks. And um, yeah, I think this may be a short overview and I hope this answered some of your questions. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you, Russia. And uh, yes, I was talking about water diplomacy. And just I want to tell you now they are writing their guidelines and uh, make sure the women are there. And uh, again, it's a, it's a problem of culture. And uh, when, when even if you put some part of gender, I think it is the donors. They want to make sure what is written is really implemented in the country. I'm, I'm coming with the country. They put gender just to have fun just to have money to do this. They, they end up with some capacity building, but you have to, to, to go to this ministry. Let's say, tell them, I spend this amount of money for you to empower your woman. How many are there in decision-making? How many are there? You see, you need some feedback. Thank you, I know, and I, I'm very happy. I'm, I'm, I'm with the Blue Peace since 2009, and uh, I, I love this. Um, and uh, I also now with the Water Council, this um, center, and um, we are preparing something to have, um, to have a good, uh, just because you are there, make sure, you know, this center should not be a department in just university. Make sure, you know, this center we're looking at it to be a hub, to be a regional center, to have some independency. Um, I, I'm with them now, but again, I'm afraid you know, it will be treated like a department and just. Uh, about what you said in, the, in your comment, yes, I, I raised the, the work of women and how it is possible to reconsider domestic responsibility. And it, you don't want the woman to, to, to work outside and to work inside her home. This is also another thing we have to work because even it is, it is refused and they, they, they denied by men. Yani you, you, you will be a minister and you back to your home, um, you have to do everything. Uh, fine, we'll do something that suits women, but we have to reconsider some of domestic roles. Thank you, Russia, and um, I'm uh, happy and thank for the Swiss government for supporting Blue Peace. It's a great thing. It was one of the initiative. It is different than others. It is not capacity building between countries. It is, they, they work directly. And we managed to have people talk together. We are progressing. And now we need your help uh, to support this center, to see it a regional one, a hub uh, equipped with everything and make sure I will be in the board, but because I'm initiator with the blue, because I am, but, and I don't want to be there because I did a lot for this. We need to have a woman there. Um, make sure this is you, the one who uh, will make sure that women are um, very active. So thank you. Now we will go to our second, because the time is running. Our uh, second uh, panelist is uh, Dr. Leah Kopi. And for, please forgive me for not pronouncing the name well. Dr. Uh, Leah has been Director General of the Finnish Environment Institute since 1994. Five to 2020, she served 
her PhD from received her PhD from University of Helsinki in 1984 and was awarded honorary doctorate in technology at um, Aalto University in 2018. From 1982 to 2010, she was a member of the Joint Commission for Transboundary Waters between Finland and Russia, being responsible for water protection um, uh, questions, including monitoring and assessment transboundary waters from July 1997, March 2000. She chaired of the Bureau of UN ECE Water Convention and has been sharing the working group on monitoring and assessment since 2001. She was a member of the International Resource Panel of UNEP in 2008-2016. Since 2016, she is a member and since 2018, a vice chair of Council of the International Institute for Applied System. So Dr. Leia, the floor is yours. And do you want me to repeat the question or you know them already? I, I think I have them here. Um, okay. Okay. Please. Home, so, yeah, yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Please. Thank the you floor so is much. yours. I, I, right. I think I have to be very brief because we are running out of time. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me to, to this really inspiring session and recognizing that kind of similar issues are uh, relevant everywhere. Oh, certainly to a different uh, degree, but, uh, but anyhow. Um, so I, I think I'm, I'm, I don't have time to talk about uh, how, how we are really uh, promoting the, the women in our own organization. Uh, it's, uh, we have a, a kind of procedures, I mean, starting from the recruitment uh, uh, rules and so on. Uh, but uh, just one thing, and which is based uh, on my experience as a director general of this uh, institute, uh, also being, uh, the institute is responsible also for water resources uh, management issues. So although the name is a environment institute, but as a female leader, I think, uh, every one of us has a, has a key role also in, how should I say, educating our uh, male employ, employees so that if you, as a director general of the institute, then of course I had all the department heads, uh, almost half of them were male. So, so then you have to remind them all the time, I mean, how, what are the, the rules also, and then not only the rules, but how, how they uh, change their attitudes, uh, not uh, overnight, but uh, gradually uh, over years. And I, I think that's, uh, that's really something that we have to remember. I think it's somehow related to the fact that several of you have already mentioned that not always uh, women have enough uh, solidarity between each other. I, I think this, this is something that we, we really should remember. But I, I, I focus now more on what I can see, uh, but what, we, what kind of cooperation maybe we could have between, uh, between our countries uh, and uh, in, in Finland, we have just uh, started, uh, or, or there is a new initiative on, on uh, water diplomacy, uh, where, where really uh, gender uh, issues are, are really uh, in, in, uh, in the core of the, of the initiative. Uh, and uh, what I can imagine what we could jointly do, first of all, of course, sharing experiences, I think that's, that's clear. Uh, but then uh, there are some specific uh, parallel uh, studies uh, 
compared to to the one that we have been uh, talking today. Uh, in in the Baltic region, we uh, my institute participated in in the project called Baltic Gender, where that that focused uh, more on on uh, marine uh, issues, but really on the leadership of a female leadership in the in the marine sector, which is. I would say maybe even more male dominated than than the water sector. That's at least my experience, because we are also responsible for for the the Baltic Sea issues in 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 Finland. So so there we uh, that that project is is uh, over now. But so, so what we could do, we could share the results and experiences. There were several. Uh, countries around the, the Baltic uh, participating in this. Uh, and uh, and that, that's one thing. Then of course, we are also planning uh, quite a lot of capacity building activities in, in our uh, new initiative. So maybe there we could have some uh, collaboration uh, in organizing courses and um, maybe even in the, in the mentoring program. And then uh, we have not yet decided upon the specific regional activities, which, which regions in, in the world would be kind of focus areas of, of the Finnish uh, initiative, but, but uh, that could be something uh, that uh, where we could find concrete collaboration as well. Um, and then, yeah, maybe more sharing of experience on, on uh, networking. Like we, we have a network of uh, female peace mediators in Finland, as well as a water diplomacy network. And those two networks have now uh, started uh, cooperation as well. So joint meetings. And so we, have, we are developing uh, new ways of, of uh, working together. And that uh, network of female peace mediators is, is also uh, kind of part of the Nordic uh, one. So there's a Nordic network as well of female peace mediators. So, so all these networks can, I hope, uh, be useful and, and uh, uh, of help as well. Uh, Maybe that's more or less what uh, I should tell at this point. Otherwise, we are totally running out of the schedule. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Leia. Uh, very interesting. Um, and you see now, you see our initiative where you have uh, represent, represent many countries in the Middle East where they suffer from shortage of water. We have um, a member of very qualified uh, women and they are uh, with us since we start and they're ready to learn and they're ready to participate. Uh, so I love what you say about this uh, Marine, uh, rather than only exchange, why don't you have have um, a similar or replicate um, this uh, experience with something that suits Middle East. And believe me, what we have here is very unique. Uh, so this is, could be one of the things. Uh, I wish I wish that you consider Middle East and you consider us uh, in your new program, uh, because um, not because I am a member of this initiative, but believe me, we are um, distinguished among we, other initiatives. Yeah? And we are so sincere, we are so devoted, we believe uh, of what we need. And yes, we have a very good uh, network of people that are ready um, uh, to come in and ready to participate. So um, I think you know, we need to, to work uh, on this and see how we can uh, start uh, career cooperation between us um, and uh, you. Thank you very much. So now we will move to our last um, uh, panelist is Ms. Anna Duran-Grichuk. 
Bricia, your name is very difficult to me. So she is a gender expert at uh, Union for Mediterranean Secretariat, have been working on gender data uh, monitoring, women economic empowerment, and women entrepreneurship in the Mediterranean region. She has a long lasting experience as senior expert in programming, um, monitoring, and evaluation of EU program level in the area of social inclusion and economic development with a specific focus on women and youth. In the last 10 years, under the framework of European neighborhood uh, instrument, um, the external cooperation with MENA countries has been the label of her professional career with focus on the cooperation among EU and non-EU EU national regional authorities, NGOs, universities, and private sector in the area of inclusive and sustainable development. So Ms. Anna, the, the floor is yours. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation. It's a pleasure and more than this, it's an honor to be to, with you today uh, with all these uh, very, very impressive women. <laughs> so thank you again for this opportunity. Um, in order to answer to your uh, three questions, first of all, what the UFM is uh, doing on promoting the women and leadership and the women in leadership in different areas, including the water and water diplomacy. Um, our role is basically the one of an intergovernmental organization working more on policy level and policy dialogue level. Uh, we are carrying out a monitoring exercise covering the four areas of Cairo Declaration, one of them on women in leadership. And uh, uh, we are going to present the result of this the first year of monitoring exercise in December in uh, Cyprus, in Nicosia, and we will publish the report by the end of the year. Uh, what the main finding from this uh, uh, um, report uh, in terms of women leadership, but not only. Um, all of you have been mentioning how important is the link between having a good policy framework, but also to translate it into practice, social norms, and culture. And this is one of the main outcomes that we found out, even if in terms of progress on gender equality in the MENA region, a lot have been achieved in the last 10 years, still when we go from the policy level to implementation level, there are still challenges and barriers, and most of them are linked to that cultural and social norms. So this is something on what absolutely need to work on. Uh, the second element is that uh, um, we saw that there is also a challenge in terms of drafting new policies, new practices, because uh, there is no data. And on this, uh, one of the challenges is also how to build a data monitoring and data gathering system in uh, many countries. And in order to help on this, uh, we are going to deliver some capacity building workshop for the gender focal point of the 42 member states and their statistical offices on uh, uh, the four areas of Cairo Declaration, one of them on women in uh, leadership. And the idea is to help them to see how not only a quantitative um, exercise, but also a qualitative one, could be carried out in terms of gender equality and women empowerment, especially on the topic on women in leadership. And we will, of course, share and circulate the working materials about this in December. Um, and what we are going to also do is to work based on these analysis and these output of the capacity building workshop uh, to prepare the next ministerial declaration of the UFM on women that is expected to be adopted between September, October next year. And this means that we are going to advocacy, to make advocacy for um, changing uh, some, let's say, uh, political, uh, cultural, but also financial uh, barriers. Because it's true, we have to change the cultural environment when we talk about uh, women in uh, public administration, in water diplomacy, but we also need to mobilize resources because investing in changing the culture, meaning investing in training, in capacity building, and this will require um, financial efforts. 
Um, in the framework of next year, we are going to also work on uh, um, how to change uh, somehow the, 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 the paradigm when we talk about uh, women leadership, uh, meaning that uh, uh, when we talk about women leadership in public administration, we face uh, not only the challenge of glass ceiling, so very few women in uh, high level position, but we also have what uh, the UNDP in a recent publication called um, uh, sorry, uh, glass walls meaning that you will find um, a higher presence of women in a few, uh, let's say, gender-oriented uh, ministries. But when we go to the technical one, including the one on Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Water, Transport, Environment, Climate Change, the percentage of women in these leadership positions will be quite low. And this is the case for MENA region. According to this report, less than 20% of women are in a leadership position, in a policy-making position in these areas. This means that uh, something must be done in terms of investing in capacity building, in training, not only technical, as you say, because women have uh, already the technical skills, but when we have to change on the environment inside the public administrations, it's something that will need a lot of effort to, to be invested into. And we will try to work on it as well from our side. Um, just for your information, in a couple of days, we will have a capacity building, a training event on science diplomacy, where there will be also a water uh, dimension. It will be online. I can share the link in the chat if someone could be interested to follow it. And there will be three days event. Um, where the idea is how the role of women <laughs> can be also integrated in the science diplomacy, um, starting from STEM, but talking about also women leadership. Um, about your last question, what can be done in terms of networking and partnership? Um, Hanti and Natasha already know because we have been talking since last March <laughs> about it. Uh, um, I personally believe that uh, we need to uh, uh, make our partnership and networking more concrete. I think it was also one of your input that you got, Hanti, you were mentioned at the beginning. Uh, what can be a more concrete uh, output and outcome for women participating in this uh, um, network or capacity building events. So um, from our side, uh, we will be more than happy to cooperate in order to structure, to join resources, uh, to mobilize relevant actors, to give women that want in this case to work uh, on their leadership capacity in the public administration, but especially also because some of you were mentioned at the beginning, in the framework of the Women, Peace and Security Agenda um, uh, to work on it. Uh, take into account that, uh, especially based on the um, COVID-19 crisis, but also the environmental crisis uh, and the climate change crisis that we are living now, especially in the MENA region. When we talk about women, peace and security, we're not talking only about conflict. We are talking about crisis. And the, all the countries that are working on adopting their national action plan for women and peace and security, they are also um, including the uh, water scarcity, um, the environmental degradation and the climate change among the priority of the national action plan. What should be done also in this science, and it could be another area of cooperation, is to see with the countries uh, how much uh, how far <laughs> the gender perspective is taken into account uh, when drafting the national action plans uh, and uh, how much uh, the cooperation across the ministries is taken into account, how much um, the um, budgeting uh, perspective <laughs> is taken into account with drafting this uh, uh, initiative. And I will stop here because I think we are run of time, but uh, thanks again for this opportunity. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Anna. And I'm happy to hear that 
to raise the issue of translating policy into implementation is very important. Um, and believe me that the water diplomacy and what we are with our colleague, our network, um, uh, some of the women that we have, they are much advanced than men if they will compete uh, on position with negotiation and these skills, believe me, I do believe in the women that we have and they are more capable maybe I'm with women, but I know, I know them and I know the quality of this specific type. And again, in Jordan, in, in technical part, uh, when you go to the Ministry of Water, you will see uh, the, the, the women engineer are very good, highly technical. Uh, but when it comes to high level of decision making, then they will remember, you know, they are women and they can cannot deal with farmers, let's say, or they cannot water, is, you know, these things. But you see, I saw one of our two colleagues when we have a problem problem in uh, water the, um, uh, pollution in, uh, in Zay, uh, two of, of our engineer and they are part of our network. Uh, they stayed there, they slept there, uh, uh, testing and examining the water until the, the problem is over. All of them, two or three women, they were there and they were uh, awarded for and what was very difficult. So, uh, yes, thank you. And we need, we need as initiative to have something Special, not in no we advertise and they can apply uh, because we have our network, we have our women with us, and they are with us since the beginning. So we need uh, to make sure that those uh, the, the capacity building they, they will reach it, uh, and um, uh, it will be to tell you the truth, yani under our uh, initiative rather than saying okay there is a proper the program here and there and you apply. So this is what we are expecting from you. Uh, we are giving you um, a very good, qualified, uh, competent woman uh, the, where they need a skill. And uh, during our activities before this, even they decide together, we decide what skills they need, um, uh, what uh, knowledge uh, they, they acquire, what are their problems. Um, uh, and uh, yes, we can have together a very good program. We take it to our um, uh, network and uh, uh, yeah, you will see a very good uh, result. Um, now, uh, I don't know, Auntie, will, uh, shall we, because we, because of the time, if anybody has a question, they write, they can write in the chat. And um, I will return back uh, to Auntie uh, to conclude uh, and take away message of this closing. Thank you very much for giving us the time and the hope. Uh, for more cooperation with Gathers. Uh, we're very happy to, to hear from you and uh, uh, our distinguished panelists. And uh, they, they appreciate, appreciate uh, what we are doing. And it is at right now, the, the six of us at very personal um, uh, efforts. And, you know, we spend days and night, uh, although all of us have a lot of work to do, but we believe in this and we are ready to, to do whatever we can to help this, those women to reach and to see a lot of women ministers. Excuse me, and excuse me mm. for interruption. I finish. I finish, Rania. Excuse me for interruption, but we only yeah. have two minutes. Okay. Please, Tahani, we haven't heard from you, so let us uh, give you the floor so you can close the, the, the session. We're very sorry we cannot have any more discussion. We promise we're going to follow up with another meeting very soon so we can take up your questions. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Auntie. Thank you, Maisun. Uh, thank you, all ladies, for being there and for supporting uh, this initiative and uh, this network. Um, actually, uh, this work is a voluntary work from us and uh, we really believe on, on what we're doing. So uh, I'm very happy that the attendance is high. Uh, for me, it's a very important indicator. And uh, also the, by the time I, I reached, because I was in another session, uh, I saw that the interaction is, is very good as well. Uh, thank you very much for uh, our uh, dear uh, guests today. Uh, who have shared their experience, it, it gave us
meet again. We have in our 90 minute series, we have also, uh, inshallah, if we can make it in the World Water Forum. So until we meet there, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for, for all your interventions. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank bye. you all. Bye. Thank you, bye. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. Thank you, Rania. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. 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 Bye. Thank you.